Hello, this is Brett Lonsdale from Lightning Tools and I'm here to show the Lightning Conductor app for Office 365. The Lightning Conductor app, available for SharePoint Online, um, is available from the App Store and also from our website. And what you can use it for is to roll up across site collections any type of SharePoint list or library and uh, you can selectively uh, choose lists or you can choose particular sites and a list type or you can simply aggregate across those site collections. There's a choice of using either the object model to perform a current site collection rollup, or you can also use the search index, um, similar to the content search web part, in order to perform a cross site collection rollup web part. The benefit of this is not only the fact that you can roll up across site collections, but you can also build views without having to use any code. So again, unlike the uh, the content query or the content by search you don't have to write any HTML or JSON code you can simply check the columns that you wish to display apply the grouping, sorting, filtering all with inside the uh, web part properties so let's have a look at how we can use it you can see here I'm already performing a, an aggregation and we've got the, uh, the filter options at the top here that allow me to filter the content so we can filter the content based on uh, date time columns including things like today and so on. Uh, we can also filter them on other text-based columns so you can see we've got the operators and we can input a text value there and, uh, and likewise for numerical columns as well such as the percentage complete. We've got the grouping and you can apply as many levels of grouping as you like and uh, beyond that we can create multiple views. So notice I've got a tasks view here where I could build using the same app multiple views that might show different types of tasks such as my tasks or today's tasks all tasks as well as other list types like announcements or calendars documents that that type of thing so what we'll do here is we'll click the uh, the drop down show you that we can uh, build a new view we can also export the data out to csv if we want to open that up in excel or something similar and we can also export the configuration data as well should you want to import this configuration into perhaps another site collection. So in order to be able to create a view we, uh, we simply click the create view option and what I'll do is uh, just call this high priority tasks. Okay, This is where we can select the type of rollup engine provider so the object model or the search and we can also set the type of view that we want to use as well. So we're going to use the grid view here uh, which allows me to simply build the view sim by, by checking columns and, and setting properties. If you want to you can also select that drop down and use XSLT or JSON as well if you like. So the data source tab allows me to then build the scope of where I want to roll up from. So notice here that we can uh, we can aggregate from multiple sites and uh, as we scroll down we can start to drill into the, the different sites inside our site collection. We can roll up from the entire host web, we can just choose the current site collection um, or we can also select uh, individual lists as well and drill down to the actual list that we want to uh, aggregate from. So I'm going to choose the uh, the current site collection. Over on the, uh, the middle section here we get to choose the type of list that we want to aggregate from. Uh, so I'll choose the tasks list. We could further filter by content type if we wanted to and that includes custom content types as well. So you would select the custom content type group and the custom content type and uh, optionally include any uh, derived child column types as well. And over on the right hand side we can set what type of filters we want to use. So we've got the persistent and dynamic filters. Dynamic filters being each user can set their own filters and be independent of other users, uh, persistent filters are set in stone by the person here configuring the app. Uh, we've also got uh, an item limitation, so how many items do we want to return back? If we uh, move across to the columns tab, you'll notice that all of the columns that are available to me now get uh, displayed and we can go through and check the columns that we want to show. So here I'm going to select the, uh, the task name column, the start date, the priority, and if we scroll up a little more we'll be able to see things like the due date and who the task is assigned to. Okay, And uh, once we've done that we can also drag the columns into the correct order that we want them to be displayed in. 
Okay, uh, we've got sorting capabilities, uh, so you can sort ascending or descending. Uh, we also have the filter capabilities as well. So the priority I'm going to uh, now set and We'll set that equal to high. And notice we get the type of head there. So we can add that and um, add as many uh, filters as we want on the same column. So when I hit save, we can see the filter's been applied. And if we scroll back up again, um, notice that you can also add calculated columns if you want to. So you can do some concatenations between different columns. And we've also got the advanced filtering that allows me to filter across columns as well. The next tab allows me to configure my view so we can um, format, for example, the assigned to column to show the uh, the user presence. Uh, if it's a date column, we can show it in short date instead of long date. Do the same on the, uh, the start date column and so on. You can provide a uh, column alias if you don't want to use the actual column name. The column width. You can apply grouping. You can choose, if you are grouping by something, you could choose not to display the column. Um, we can also apply formatting and conditional formatting as well. So in here, um, if we had, for example, uh, a task due today, uh, we could go and choose a four color and a background color, apply it to the entire row, and then we'll say that this is equal to today. Okay, so we'll save that. I don't have anything that matches that criteria yet, but we'll modify a value and uh, you'll be able to see the formatting apply. We've also got the pagination, so we can set the pagination options. Um, what happens if there are no items returned? Well, it might be that we're filtering the items based on uh, tasks due today, and maybe there aren't any tasks due today, so we can return a message to the user if that was the case. Um, we can also set the column that is going to become the link column so when we uh, click onto the, the, the column it will take us to the list item. Okay, um, We've got column headers that we can show or hide and uh, also we can show document icons and group by folders if we want to also. So once we're happy with that we just hit save and that retrieves our list items so you can see there in fact the uh, conditional formatting has been applied and um, we've got two items that are high priority and now I can simply switch between all tasks view or the high priority tasks and I can build as many of those views as I like. Okay, many thanks.